We exist at multiple dimensions, but you're stuck at the chemical dimension. Peyote's gonna help you go beyond chemical. To an extra chemical dimension? <laughs> I've been fascinated by psychoactive drugs my whole life. I love to study their chemistry and impact on society. And my work has allowed me to investigate extraordinary substances around the world. Yet there are still mysteries that remain. The peyote spirit saw the plight of the humans, and he decided to manifest himself here on Earth. To get to know peyote, you need to have a conversation with me. This is the story of Lefafora Williams E.I. Its ribs emerge in a Fibonacci sequence, with each tubercle bearing trichomes creamy and full. Napiform in root, autogamous in flower. Beneath its glaucous green epidermis lie over 50 alkaloids, the most abundant of which, mescaline, became the first psychedelic to undergo scientific study. But long before mescaline's isolation by Western scientists, Peyote was worshipped by North American indigenous groups who used the cactus to commune with the divine. Outlawed in the land where it grows, Peyote has found a new home potted in the greenhouses of Thai cactophiles. United States, there are only two living organisms that are placed in the most restrictive legal category, Schedule 1. That's cannabis and Lafophora williamsii, the peyote cactus. And possession of the plant itself is a crime. Whereas in Thailand, they are collector's items that are sold to cactophiles for astronomical sums of money simply because they're so beautiful, not because of their psychoactivity. Hi, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Wow, it's a beautiful collection. Thank you. <laughs> How did you first become interested in Lafophora? ก็ดูในหนังสือครับดูในหนังสือเห็นว่ามันเอ่อน่าสนใจรูปร่างอะไรมีหลากหลายก็มันก็เป็นหนึ่งชนิดที่มันมีความแปลกอ่ะเป็
Look at this monster, Areocarpus reticus. They're so interesting looking. จะมาซื้อเพราะจะเอาไปเลี้ยงไม่มีใครซื้อเพราะว่าจะไปลองเสพติดเนอะยังไม่เคยมี Look at these immaculate Obregonia denigrii. When the cristate forms flower, they produce this mohawk of blossoms. What is the most expensive Lophophora that you've ever sold? This really expensive Cristata. How much is that? Eighty thousand baht. <laughs> Very expensive cactus. Yeah, it's really expensive. Yeah. What about these ones that are grafted? It's a very easy way and the most expensive way to grow a plant. The one that is black, black, hard. You can see the graft, right? There's a lot of advantages to grafting these cacti. They get very big, very fast to the point of sexual maturity, where they're producing flowers and fruit and seeds. This is the rootstock that will transport water and nutrients into the scion. Really easy. You make it seem easy. Yeah. Oh, graph set. Then it will be. Take Cristata, the black flower, to multiply the plant to increase the production so it grows faster. Have you used peyote yourself? ไม่เคยเลี้ยงอย่างเดียวเลี้ยงเป็นต้นไม้เราไม่เคยใช้เป็นสิ่งเสพติดมีเพื่อนเคยเล่าให้ฟังว่ารสชาติมันแย่ก็เลยไม่คิดจะลอง But this is a cactus from the southern United States. Have you ever been to Texas? Texas. Texas. Oh no. William C I from Texas. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Endemic from the Rio Grande Valley to the Mexican Mesa del Norte, peyote thrives in pockets of this arid, calcium carbonate-rich soil. Though early Spanish explorers documented its use in the 16th century, archaeological evidence suggests that peyote was valued as far back as 6,000 years ago. Peyote has dual citizenship on land bisected by the U.S.-Mexico border, but due to its scarcity, it's difficult to find without the help of an expert guide. Grandpa was the owner of five to ten thousand acres. We used to pick peyote in all these properties before. There used to be a lot of peyote, a lot. Everything is plowed, everything around. The plowing, it's destroying the peyote and it's disappearing. For over four generations, San Juanita's family has allowed peyote distributors, called peyoteros, to sustainably harvest on their land. You keep your eyes to the side, you keep your eyes to the side. So you've been coming here since you were a child? Yes, since I was five years old. I'm 40% Native American. I've always been intrigued with Native Americans. They were run away from their own property. So if I can save it for their religious purpose, why not? Wouldn't you? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Peyote, you have to be very, very, very vigilant in order to find it. Here's a peyote, small one. Wow, this is the first time I've ever seen it in the wild. I learned from the Native Americans that you gotta bless the first ones you see. And then you cut it, right? I don't know if I should. I've never cut a peyote before. Come on, there's no big deal. I don't Just know. Just make if it I could. straight. That's it. I'm afraid of hurting it. I have such a love for it. Yeah, well, this is where we find more. Come this way. Ouch, ouch, ouch. 
Protected by the treacherous Tomalipan thorn scrub, peyote grows in the shadows of mesquite trees, surrounded by Apuntia, Coryphantha, Echinocereus. That's the star cactus right here. And Astrophytum, Asterius. It does look like peyote, and that's why people get it confused. It's almost perfectly camouflaged. Yep. Oh, a lot of thorny material here. And it's very hard to find a single button. Come this way. Aquí. You see right there? Oh, my God. Such beauty. This is an enormous cluster. I've never seen anything like this before. Big and plump. Some of them are flowering. To find a truly undisturbed population like this is incredibly difficult. Ah, ow. I can't use my fingers because they're covered in so many spines. Ow, ow, ow. At least 83 separate crowns. Even in cultivation, I've never seen anything like that. Actually, it's almost 2.9 inches. Oh, they're so big. Aquí, Hamilton. That's Mexico on the other side of the yeah. river. So when people are coming in from Mexico, they have to cross this river. They cross this river through here. They cross every day. And most of them, they make them the coyotes make them bring drugs. Mm-hmm. The border patrols passes through here. And there's a lot of people that have drowned here. For thousands of years, long before men divided the continent with borders, peyote and the people who used it migrated freely across the Rio Grande. And as night falls over that same river, I find myself in the company of some locals who spoke of their relationship with this sacred plant. Peyote. Well, some people say that you start seeing stuff, but I don't really believe in because I never tried it before. <laughs> I mean, more power to us, right? We love pot. In this town, uh, there's a lot of drugs moving and everything. And yeah. And that's a bad thing, drugs? It's not the drug. It's the money. Yeah. All bullshit aside off my mom, dude. I've seen, like, dudes with tons of bricks just down that way. Do people talk about peyote a lot around here? No. No, it's not common. No. Weed, cocaine, crystal. Oh, yeah. Crystal and Especially a lot of... at uh, K2. Fuck yeah, It's dude. moving quick here. Like, it'll get you addicted to it. And yeah, dude. Peyote, I'm going to be honest, I mean, I don't... I don't know about that. It's a very rare cactus. It needs to be protected. is something that goes on in a water solution. A cactus is basically a plant that is designed to live in a water deficient environment with a metabolism to preserve to the maximum amount the water that they need to, to live. Lopisarius shatii. This is a really nice specimen. Wow. This is fasciation, you know, cresting. This was found in the wild. This plant came from just across the river in Mexico. Wow, that is enormous. It is, isn't it? You don't see them much bigger than that, ever. It's probably a 50 or 60 year old plant you're looking at. And why is it the case that these cacti are in a cage? Oh, 
Uh, strictly DEA. For any Schedule One substance, you always have to have three locks. Uh, so there's the, the gate out there, there's the door to the greenhouse, and there's this lock here. That, that gives you what's considered adequate protection against going where it's not authorized. Just a hair over five inches. Wow. They treat the plant and the substance as equally, um, how should we say, dangerous. <laughs> The mescaline molecule is produced in fairly high quantities in the tissues of the plant. The peyote doesn't need spines because it has alkaloids. It becomes an automatic herbivore deterrent. You take one bite of that and you say, no, I don't like that. In 1897, German pharmacologist Arthur Hefter became the father of psychedelic chemistry when he isolated and ingested 150 milligrams of mescaline hydrochloride he concluded it was the alkaloid responsible for the visions of peyote. The fact that mescaline produces this psychoactive or spiritual effect in humans is a... Total accident. Mm -hmm. The history of peyote goes back as far as we know to some specimens that were excavated by archaeologists in 1933. These artifacts were effigies of peyote buttons. We did the radiocarbon dating. It was right at about 6,000 years before present. Peyote was in wide use. It was traded between tribes and used as medicine for an arrow wound. There was an outbreak of cholera in the 19th century where peyote was apparently used indicating an antibacterial effect toward the end of the 19th century. The native tribes were deprived of their land, first of all, moved off of their native territory, put in these reservations, which were not much better than jails. And just at that time, when their cultures had basically fallen apart, there was nothing left for them. That's when the ceremony that we recognize now as a typical peyote ceremony showed up. Those things only started happening toward the end of the 19th century. In a typical ceremony, an ordained guide called a roadman led the congregants in all-night peyote rituals used to mark life events, heal the sick, and communicate with ancestral spirits. By the turn of the century, the peyote religion had spread all over the, the Plains tribes. Largely, it was due to the great Comanche chief, Quanah Parker, and when he saw what good the peyote did for his tribe, he said, these other people need to know about this. At some point, there is either a legal or racial or religious opposition, or all three, all three. to this plant. Absolutely. The authorities and the church particularly wanted peyote to disappear, to go away. As the peyote religion spread, a propaganda campaign by prohibitionists, Christian missionaries, and opportunistic lawmakers mischaracterized peyote as a deadly addictive drug that drove its users insane. So peyotists united as the Native American church to protect their practices from white prohibitionists. In 1970, the Controlled Substances Act placed peyote in Schedule I making it illegal across the United States. But Native Americans demanded the right to use their holy sacrament. I represent this pute, and I take it as a holy medicine. All my life, I can see that this medicine hasn't harmed anybody. Fortunately, in the mid-1990s, the Congress made an exemption for peyote for bona fide ceremonial use to protect perhaps the most precious of all American liberties, religious freedom. The peyote distributors are now registered with the DEA. They are all getting up in age. And so the number of peyote distributors has declined with the amount of harvestable peyote that has declined. There is enormous damage being wreaked on wild populations of peyote because South Texas is is burgeoning in economic growth. And so you build a Walmart, whoop, there goes four acres of peyote. Build a subdivision, whoa, there's 100 acres of peyote gone. 
the root plowing with these enormous instruments buries all the cacti that grow in the top four inches or so of soil. Every cactus that was on the place is going to be dead. So economic development. It's the main reason why the peyote population is shrinking so fast. As strip malls and cattle ranches engulf the South Texas landscape, the last three peyoteros venture out to harvest the cactus while they still can. In the 1870s, Mexican-American peyoteros began acting as intermediaries between Native Americans and the cactus they worshipped. In 1975, there were 27 licensed peyoteros in South Texas. Today, due to increased government scrutiny and habitat destruction, the estimated 250,000 members of the Native American church are only granted legal access to peyote through three peyoteros. Hi, this is Hamilton. I'm only going to be in Texas for three days, and I'd like to talk with you in person. Come on, man. No cameras. You go make some money. But $150,000 is just not reasonable. Oh my God, this guy has terrible phone manners. Wait. Uh. Hi, I'd like to talk with you and could I take a look at some of your cacti? Yeah. Right. Hi, good to meet you. Oh, beautiful. Some of them have been there like 20 years. I became a dealer 26 years ago. Has it been a good business? Yeah, enough to pay the bills and things like that. Save a little money. But uh, not to get rich. <laughs> Peoteros must now lease private land, train pickers, and present detailed documentation of their harvested cacti to the Texas Department of Public Safety. Why are there only three people that are licensed peoteros? Really, I don't know. There used to be like 10 or 11, but see, they, they started getting older and they gave up because they started changing the laws and they don't want to write everything down. Paperwork. When I started cutting medicine, like when I was 13 years old, it used to pay us only two cents a button. It was good work because there was a lot of medicine back then. Everywhere you turn around, you had to watch out because you would step on it. Do you think there's something magical about the cactus? Something what? Magical. I'm going to tell you something that I have never told anybody. Over there, where that medicine is, every morning, every morning, I bless myself and talk to the medicine for a little, maybe one minute or two minutes. Because an elder told me a while back, talk to the medicine, talk to the medicine. Anything you need, you, you come, I'll come back to you. And uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. I've been doing it for 15 years. Every day. I got about four or five grandsons. I hope one of them uh, takes over when I, you know. You guys ever put up a teepee before? No, I haven't. No? TP 101. Okay, grab those underneath, right here, right here. Right underneath. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay, slow down, slow down, slow down. Okay, right there. Wait up. To do this before was, was illegal. You would be put in prison. I've been doing ceremonies for, running them for like 20 years. Yeah. But I didn't really charge, you know, or try to make money off of it. It wasn't like my livelihood. It was my service. I used to have a, a construction business. You can put that. I used to make fences for a living. And some homeless guy made a fire in the back. And I had a cedar fence, so everything caught fire. My whole business was burned to the ground. But then when you don't have nothing else to make a living out of, the view it a little different, you know? Peyote business. <laughs> Not exactly, but... Oh, this one's heavy. Wait up. When I was young, I went to Mexico to the place where my grandfather was born, Wiricuta, where the peyote grows over there. So the first time I ate peyote was in Mexico. I wasn't like in search of peyote. Yeah. The peyote found me. <laughs> the seagull feather was given to me by the chief of the Lakota Sundance. He blessed me right here in my backyard. But you put it on the top of the teepee. Just to remember a time when, when we were free like the eagles to do what we wanted to do. More, more, more. Right there. All right. Not too bad. When they wrote the Constitution 200 and some years ago, we were considered something other than human. So we didn't have human rights. So it took that long. Now we can do this. Put up our teepees in our backyard. Invite people to eat peyote, sing all night. <laughs> yeah. So, you want to cut your peyote buttons that you're going to eat? Well, we still got light. All right, so, since you've never cut them before, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to do it. So you can feel them, feel the energy. There's a lot of ants on this hill here, fire ants. And you're going you're gonna to cut along the, the bottom like that. OK, so you see what I did? Cut straight across there. Yeah. Better go quick, because those ants are going up your knife. I think I almost got it. Better? Yeah. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Ah, that's a good one. Oh, okay. Ouch. Oh. Okay, here. You can eat as many as you want. I think this is a good amount, or more? Yeah, it takes some more anyway. You see how many is in that bowl? Yes. I eat that many, one time. What happened? I felt really good. It actually opened up my heart so much that I felt compassion for the Spanish people, you know? Even though what they came and they did to all the native people in Mexico and all the people here and everything, I found in my heart a way to forgive all the Spanish people. We all have three opportunities in this life. I don't know if this is your first or your third, but I do know it's one of them. Corn, deer meat, peyote, they go together. Like a trinity. It will open up for you. What they call a, a zip file, is that what they call it? Yeah. Okay, so this is the mother of the Zeppiles. So it will open up to you in the months and years to come. I've been studying psychedelics for a decade, and the opportunity to eat peyote is something that has never come up before. It's so precious and slow growing. It's a little bit hard to do. You fall in love with it a little bit. 73 total. 
including two extremely large grandfather peyotes. You will always have the medicine in you, no matter where you go. Peyote's range extends hundreds of miles south of the Texas border, where the Huichol of central Mexico annually embark on a ritual pilgrimage to the land of Wiracuta, where they believe all life emerged. During this journey, they consume peyote in order to commune with a sacred deer whose antlers arose from arrows placed upon its head by the Huichol god of fire. This is the fire. This is where the fire goes. Look, I've been looking for this arrow all this time. Wow. I couldn't find it. I'm going to put it right here. Arrows are spiritual for us. I was kind of ordained on this spot. They laid me down right here, like this. And they drew my picture with a, with a stick. And they said that I laid my life down for this medicine. That's how we become ordained in this tradition. This is your connection to the mother right here. Like the mother's embracing you. Like that. Let's get to remember that moment. OK, I think we're ready now. That's what I'm asking for the money I'm telling. That's what I'm asking for the money I'm telling. That's what I'm asking for the money I'm telling. Now use your mind to, to consecrate this peyote that we're going to eat. Let's just water the oh. whole. Put it around your glasses. There you go. I want to communicate the value of this plant to help people recognize the absurdity of making a cactus illegal because that's a very absurd situation. Very absurd situation, yeah. My brother Hamilton here has a, a strong intention. You know, at one time, they said you're not supposed to give peyote to white people. The US government, they made a law that said only native people are supposed to eat peyote. So then, the native people believed it. OK. So this government that killed 90 million people is telling me that I'm not supposed to give peyote to white people. Come on. Ignorance, man, that's what it is. So now we have a religion based on this little cactus. What is Jewish based on? A book? Yeah. What is Christianity based on? A book? Can you eat a book? You could. Probably better not to. Sit down, bro. Earlier, you chose this button here. Did you chose? OK. And I'm going to kind of separate the segments a little bit. Yep. Wow. I can see the apical meristem. Okay. The vascular bundle. Go like this to the four directions. One, two, three, four. Okay. Bless yourself. Bless yourself. Okay, now touch it right here to your forehead. Remember your intentions. Okay. Now, now you're ready. Take one of these segments, like this. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, look at that. Mm. I've been eating peyote for over 45 years. I've only seen goodness come out of this. I've seen miracles. With peyote, it's important to think good things and to say good things. Because everything you think and everything you say when you eat peyote has a good possibility of manifesting. Okay. It's okay to smile when you eat peyote. It's, it's even okay to laugh. It's a warm and gentle feeling, coupled with a bit of nausea from eating so much raw cactus. It was a very large button. Keep eating it, because once you stop, it gets harder the more, the more you think about it. Just relax, take a deep breath. Take it easy. Okay, go over there by the fire in the dirt. Go to the dirt. You were doing good. That's good. It's cleaning all that what you don't need. See, you have sickness inside of you. The peyote's getting it out. <clears throat> we give it to the fire. We give it to the earth. See? It's gone. Your energy is flowing a little abnormal. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. You need to stop thinking. You know I wrote a book. Really? Yeah. It's called Don't Think. Yeah? Yeah. 200 pages. Oh, huh. It's all blank. Okay. I'm over 60. I'm, on, I'm getting close to 70. Really? Do you see gray hairs in my head? You look really good. You're looking good. You know why? I had a very addictive personality. Really? I used to be an alcoholic. That's why I say we're similar. Yeah. I don't drink You're addicted alcohol. to misery. Addicted to misery? Yeah. Interesting. All you're talking about is like your problems. I have solutions. This is my bowl of solutions right here. You want to have a bowl of solutions? Yeah, that sounds like a good okay. thing. Eat another piece. Yeah. Oh, you get all that bad out of me. You make me see what's good. How could just a little green cactus make me? Ooh, just feel the whole world with love. So much love. I wanna get to know this beautiful spirit they call Hikurito. You can say Hikurito. Hikurito. 
you know, Hamilton, a lot of people that are viewing this are going to say that we lack reverence for the POV. Because we're laughing. That's true. You know. Maybe we should be more serious, you know. I have a hard time being serious. Why do people like being serious so much? I don't know. In our culture, God is a verb. Mm -hmm. It's not a noun. You should look at yourself as a verb. So eat more peyote. Okay. That's, that's what I'm trying okay. to tell you. You are a verb. Oh, Hamilton, my way through these. Do you feel high? Uh, I feel more aware. Yeah. More aware. Peyote is creating more awareness. It starts by looking at the fire. You can see things that are there that you can't see without eating peyote. When I eat peyote, if I listen to the fire, it will tell me things. It told me, you're gonna get a lot of money. And when you get that money, use it to buy a lot of peyote. So I went and I bought $20,000 worth of peyote. That's a lot of peyote. That is a lot of peyote. That's a lot of peyote. A minute ago, you were thinking about your own discomfort, your own self. But you need to get out of yourself. Think about the universe for a moment. With peyote, you need to expand. In the fire, everything exists. It's the record of the universe. So through the imagination, the thoughts, messages begin to come to you. The sacred, shimmering heart. Ultimate fear is death. But if you're not afraid to die, then you don't have to be afraid of anything. And this is what the peyote showed me. You know, you actually look better than when you came in. Was it you said that I was addicted to misery? I hope we cured your addiction. It's possible. <laughs> hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, walk on peace. Check it out, yo. Hey, y'all not hit the well, oh, y'all not hit the well, oh, y'all hit me. Hey, y'all not hit the well, oh, y'all not hit me. Hey, y'all not hit the well, oh, y'all not hit me.